Yeah, I was basically inspired to uh, do the Smack DVD through like um, the mixtape circuit, man, DJ Clue. They really inspired me, man. I, I remember just buying the DJ Clue tapes, the Ron G tapes, the Kid Capri tapes, and just listening to the music. <laughs> Yes, I said that, but the word is smack. So let me date myself for a minute. In a time where you couldn't pu push a button, in a time where, you know, YouTube didn't exist, how did we get the information? There was one man, smack, and it was called Smack DVD. At a very young age, he knew how important the culture would be, yes? The culture that makes billions of dollars around the world. The culture where from what we wear, to what we eat, to what you feel, to what kids emulate, Smack knew how big this thing would be from the gate. And he created something which was called Smack DVD. And from Smack DVD, it grew to be becoming the URL League. And now he has a partnership with Drake. I'm gonna introduce Smack and I need everyone to tune in and you're gonna see a side of just the culture and stories that like y'all have never heard before. So let's tune in. This is my brother, the Beard God, Smack. There you go, the Beard Yo, God. What up, Clef? <laughs> What's good, my brother? What up, my family? You good? Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? Glad, glad, glad that we got the opportunity to get this done. You know what I mean? Well, well, first of all, man, Smack. So everyone that's listening. If they was to ask me to describe you, right? Yeah. I would say <laughs> the Vince McMahon of battle <laughs> rap, right? That's right. So, I mean, like, yo, Smack is the Vince McMahon of, of battle rap. And so everyone that's tuned in, we got people from all parts of the world. And what happens is, Say like I live in Saddle River, right? So I'm in Bergen County, and they identify with battle rap. Like every time I got to give them a reference, they always go to Eight Miles, the Eminem movie. Yeah. You see what I'm saying yeah. to you? Because that's sort of like their way of like understanding it. Right. So what I want to do is, I want to start off because Smack DVD, Stasis. as a young Fuji. <laughs> As a young Fuji, 93, 94, in the streets of Newark, New Jersey, right? Before we had the, the idea of YouTube or anything. So if I was in Jersey, my cousin was in Miami, my other man was in Detroit, my other boy was in Virginia, my other guy was in LA, right? The only way we was able to get this information on what was going on culturally in the streets was Smack DVD was our version of like real news. You know what I'm saying yes, to you? Yes, so yes. my thing is with you because as a young kid, I watch how Benzino and them started the source, you know, like Correct. there was some kids in college and there was the movement. So I want to start off by asking you, you know, as someone who looks up to you also, you know, we've had different conversations and I'm watching, I've watched your growth on a whole nother level. What made you, what's your passion that made you want to start off by literally you know, being behind the camera, filming the conversations and literally wanting it to bring it through the 50 states of America. Like, what made you want to bring news to us, Smack? Well, um, yeah, I was basically inspired to uh, do the Smack DVD through, like, um, the mixtape circuit, man, DJ Clue. I gotta give them boys they props, man. Like, you know what I mean? That really inspired me. When I used to go to like, you know, 
downtown Brooklyn, you know, Jamaica Avenue, Queens, Harlem, New York, wherever we could get, you know, our music from, because that's like the central location of all the neighborhoods where you could go buy your sneakers, you could go buy your clothes, and then you could also go buy your mixtapes and your CDs and your music. And, you know, um, they really inspired me, man. I, I remember just buying the DJ Clue tapes, the Ron G tapes, the Kid Capri tapes, and just listening to the music. And I wanted to actually, instead of hearing all this music, I wanted to see what was really going on with all these rappers and these hip hop stars that was on the mixtape. I want to see them do the freestyle. I want to see them in the studio. I want to see them in their neighborhoods. I want to, I want to like, cause back then it was only MTV, um, and BET, you know? So, like, when you get an artist... And Ralph McDaniel, yeah, Video, oh, yeah, video music, music Box. Box. Shout out to Video Music Box, Uncle yeah. Ralph. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uncle um, Ralph, yeah. You know, um, but like, when they on these circuits, they not really their true self. You understand what I'm saying? They being politically correct, they, they promoting their projects, they are, you know, trying to come across as, like, you know, professionals. Let's in a sort of say, like in, in layman's terms. So, you know, I, I, I know these, I knew a lot of dudes that was in the industry, you know, from my neighborhood. And when I used to see them on all these circuits, I'm like, that's not, that's them, but that's not really them, like, you know? So uh -huh. Uh -huh. I, I always, you know, wanted to actually go get next to these hip hop stars, go see them in the studio, go, go, go see them in their neighborhoods and see if they had the credibility that they spoke about on the, in their music, to see like, you know, them actually doing a collaboration with another artist, you know, just to see uh -huh. what's the chemistry. So like, I was, I, I, was, I was inspired to actually get the necessary equipment for me to actually capture this style of content and then deliver it through a, 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 a disc, a digital disc that I could service around the world. But, you know, I had to wait actually, man, because like, you know, this was like 2000. Technology had to mm -hmm. catch up with time because I've been wanting to do it, but like, you know, the technology, like you said, it wasn't there. This was before it was even an internet, you know, so to speak. Yeah. You gotta think, you know, when you say YouTube, YouTube is probably like the videos, the, the biggest video sharing website that exists. And yeah. they was established or they started getting, they wheels rolling in like 2004, 2005 is when YouTube really got developed and people started to catch on about, you know, their services as far as video sharing was concerned and everything like that. But like, this was before that. So like you mentioned, like when it came to hip hop and the news and what's going on with this artist, with that artist, Smack DVD was the, the, the pinnacle of hip hop culture, information and news all across the world. Like, you know, because, you know, shout out to the bootleggers. <laughs> you know, because they used to basically, you know, get me in places that I couldn't reach myself. So it was like sort of the gift and the curse. But uh, yeah, yeah, man. Like you know, what I mean, I was just inspired to try to like you know, what I mean, get that information out there as much as I can. And um, you know, I I I I I, I, I was just you know blessed enough to like you know, what I mean, actually have a vision, think about it and then actually bring it into fruition with it, and within a couple of years of technology, this new technology being introduced. Matt, you know what's amazing about you? Um, shout out to Beasley too. Yeah, that's my brother. Like, um, of course, that's like me and Jerry Wonder. Yeah, <laughs> shout out to Wonder, as a matter of fact. Yo. Jerry Wonder, what's up? Yeah. Jerry Good Wonder, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, in, in, in 2020, you've taken the brand to a level of globalization. And so you was one of the original content creators, like at the gate. And so as a businessman, because I, I watch you and as you grow, now a kid that's 15 years old, 
I'm watching this. I got like nephews here. Like you're like a god to them. You see what I'm saying to you? Yeah. And they all watch battle rap, right? So coming up, the myth was, oh, battle rappers can't write songs, right? This was the myth when we was coming up. So whether if it was the Fugees, like, you know, we straight up, I'm Velsberg High School. I was Nelly Nell. You know, the idea was, you know, the battle and rap culture was part of it. But the idea of making it a lucrative business. And so now a kid, you'd be like, yo, what you want to be? Yo, I want to be a battle rapper. Like, dog, if I become the biggest rap battle rapper, I could be getting 50K a purse, right? So I'm just giving you an example. So what's interesting to me is everyone that's listening, you are what's called the anchor of cultural content where big media come and search inside of your content and pull stars out and put them on like television shows, right? Correct. So I watched this with Wild and Out, right? So in Wild and Out, um, shout out to Nick Cannon, my brother. Shout in Wild and Out, yeah. So when when we talk about some of the rappers that came from Smack to Wild and Out, can you tell me? who exactly they are and how did that kind of merge sort of like happen? Because that's interesting to me because you're like a hub for content. Yeah. That's a lot of power. That means when people are looking for credibility, right. they come straight to you. Yeah, so how absolutely. did that happen? Well, yeah, definitely like, you know what I mean? I've been like a, um, a source for a talent, so to say. Like, you know, a lot of talent, you know, jumped on my platform and actually got you know, their first look or recognized from somebody that was like big corporations or biggest situations and they got opportunities to actually entertain those uh, um, situations with, um, you know, other parties. And, um, you know, it, it started from the Smack DVD. Like, you know what I mean? I was like the liaison from like streets underground to mainstream. Mm -hmm. Like if you got on yeah. the Smack DVD, you know this is the the hottest thing in the underground circuit. You know everybody. Yeah. It, it was like this say it was like the Bible of the streets. It's like the Bible of hip hop. Like you know if you wanted to know what was going on with you know say like Eminem and and this for example, let's say Fifty Cent. In fact, Joe, yeah. I was the only person that could actually, at, at their time in the fuse, they cool now and you know, we all grown, but like, you know, everybody gotta yeah. go through their growing pains coming up, you know, yeah, and this hip hop yeah. culture, every this is this this hip hop culture is so competitive and you yeah. know, everybody <laughs> is like, you know, trying to fight for that number one spot. So, yeah, um, yeah, but at the time when they was feuding with each other, I was the only one to act that could actually go sit down with Fat Joe. He could just tell his side of the story, yo, smack this, that, and that. And then I could go to the G Unit office and go sit down and talk uh -huh. to Fifth about Fat Joe. Uh -huh. And he's just like, nah, yeah. it's just that. And he's saying his side of the story. So like yeah. with situations like that, that's what, you know, solidified the credibility of the Smack brand and, you know, putting it on a pedestal where people look at the Smack brand as being the Bible of hip hop or the Bible of the streets. Now, the credibility, so now, when it comes to up and coming talent that actually was on it, because we just didn't focus on mainstream stars and A-class stars. Now, we also had A-class stars, but somebody that you'd never hear Hear about that live in your neighborhood that was just coming up or did this had talent yeah. that could actually make it that I felt that they need a look so I will mix everything all together so it made it to where like up-and-coming talents loved the platform or wanted to be on a platform so bad the smack DVD platform so they could actually be surrounded with these a-class stars so that made me be and put the whole brand in position with being the liaison between the underground market and the mainstream. So now, like if you was a up and coming rapper and you feel like you really got what it takes to actually, you know, do your thing in this hip hop culture, you are, your number one priority is to get on Smack DVD. 
I gotta get on right, Smack right, DVD because right. I know on Smack DVD I'm gonna be on a DVD with 50 Cent and I'm gonna be on a DVD with the game, Cameron, this person, anybody that was popping at the time. You're gonna be in the wow. mix with everybody. So, you know, I always had, you know, the uh, stigma or the uh, rep um, reputation of like actually helping up and coming artists established their mainstream looks. So, you know, in 2000, and, 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 and just to sum it up, just to give y'all some more history about the Smack DVD, um, it was a DVD compilation of videos with some of your favorite artists, interviews, them in um, areas or places that you know you wouldn't you wouldn't expect to see your favorite hip hop star. I'm in their house. We in the studio. We in the cars. We on jets flying around the world. We in boats. We in planes. We 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 just getting interviews with your favorite stars where you won't normally see an interview with them at, you know? Them in a natural environment. Period. You know what I mean? And then Period. at the end of the DVD, I used to close each and every DVD off with a classic battle rap, like a classic battle. So that was just the art form that I always had love and respect for, that we used to love doing and participating coming up as kids in high school, in a lunchroom, ciphers going back and forth, who had the illest rounds, or rhymes and rounds. And, you know, I just wanted to keep that our form and that essence of hip hop alive because at the time it was losing, you know, um, interest or people wasn't really interested in battle rap at a point where it was just like, yo, this, 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 it's, it's, it's more than just going to the studio and making a song. You know, there's other forms of hip hop entertainment that I feel that, you know what I mean, people need to pay attention to that people could actually enjoy. And battle rap was that actual art form that I felt necessary that I give on each and every DVD that I made a look or give it the platform it needed to bring and raise the awareness of this art form. So, yeah. It got to like 2007, 2008, you know, um, technology caught up with times. Everybody started having cameras. It was cameras everywhere, <laughs> you know? You know, everybody had cameras. They started having cameras on phones. And now it's like, for me, I was a person that lived by going, capturing content with favorite, your favorite hip hop stars. And when I used to do that, I used to put like 15, 16 different stars or different artists on one DVD. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, it'd take original, me, original. Yeah, it'd take me like two to three months to actually go get up with this person, fly over there, get up with that person, go over there, get up with that person and make a solid piece of work, a body of work that I feel comfortable with presenting to the world, you know, cause I'm not gonna just go mm -hmm. get two, two artists and then put it out, nah. I was a man of respect yeah. and I feel like that's why you know, you can't copy respect. That's one of my logans. I mean, my slogans. You can't <laughs> copy respect, and man. That's where it comes <laughs> from because, you know, my, my brand was always a brand of quality. My work was always respected. It, I, I never came through with nothing that was cheesy or nothing that was um, less than expected from a, a professional brand. And um, yeah, man, technology caught up with time. The artists started this, like, the blocks came out. What really happened was the blocks came out. Once the blocks came out, yeah. Clef, it was like the value of actually shooting a hip hop star is kind of, kind of decreased because everybody was getting content and information started coming out quicker than normal. And like the yeah. time I go around and film like 10 to 15 different, you know what I mean, MCs or stars, the content was aging, it was getting old because the information yeah. was getting out quicker. Like now, you know, people didn't care where they was getting the information from. They just wanted the information. Yeah. The blogs is posting anything. As long as they could get, you know, the exclusive or the or, 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 or the or the story first, if they could break the story first, they get in traffic to their website and that's all they cared about. Mm -hmm. So people started not even caring about the quality of the content. They just want the exclusive the exclusive story. So information started coming out faster. 
people started putting up cell phone videos and getting their point across. So I had to adapt. And one thing that I felt that I was able to control was the content of battle rap because, you know what I'm saying, it was just a different form of hip hop entertainment. Because once you do a battle, it's like you can't recreate the moment. It's history. You know, it's history in the making. It's history being made. So. Yo, you know, you know why I pulled my phone out, right? Yeah. I pulled my phone out because not only do I talk about it, but if any, if they zoom into my phone, right, mm -hmm. they will literally see my URL app. Yeah. Like my <laughs> URL app lives inside of my phone. That's like what it it's um. <laughs> Yeah, so I want everybody yeah. that, that that's really like this is not look look I got I got CNN Fox News URL like it all like yeah. I got Russian TV everything um, and I only say that because when you speak of like the content and the reinvention right because as as creators we constantly have to reinvent ourselves right and it's sort of like so when I'm 50 and then I hear a Young Thug song called Why Clef Jean, you know what I'm saying? Like, it automatically makes my daughter think her daddy is cool, you know what I'm saying? Cause she's right. 15, you know? Or right. when DJ Khaled takes my song, Wild Thoughts, and, um, and, and, and take a classic that I wrote, Maria Maria, and bring it, you know, to Rihanna. Damn. And right. you know what I'm saying? So that reinvention uh, has to be based off of a body of work that you create with credibility. You know what I'm saying to you? So for mm -hmm. me, um, I got the app because at the end of the day, it's important that, you know, writers, if you're in the space of writing to stay sharp. Let me tell you how real I am when it comes to you, Smack. I was running to become president of Haiti at one time. Mm -hmm. And there's a picture with me on a private plane, one computer, <coughs> is me doing policies and all of that. And the other computer, I'm watching <laughs> Smack DVD. <laughs> like, yeah. So like for me, and people was like, and this is gonna help. So when my um, advisors were like, what you watching? I said, yeah, I'm watching Smack DVD, then I'm gonna watch um, Proving Ground. Then, you know, um, I'm watching like these URLs, Summer Madness, and they go, what's that? And I go, well, you know, the best way to explain it to you, it's, Shakespearean jousting, you know? It's like, it's the the roughest form of poetry, but yet the most beautifulest form of poetry. Which leads me into this, like, being born in Haiti, raised in Marlboro Hope Projects, Coney Island, um, and, you know, uh, my cousin, one of my cousins got killed in front of Erasmus High School. Um, my father decided, like, yo, I'm gonna move these kids to Jersey because, coming up, he ain't know what I was going to do. You know what I'm saying to you? Like, you know, them Haitians in the time, the way that we was moving was crazy. But one day, I saw two dudes in each other's faces. I'll never forget in the playground. And literally, like, and you know, like, every day, you know, it's knife fights, gun fights, all kind of craziness, because you just come in America, you know, you trying to get your respect, your cousins getting deported. And when I saw these two dudes in each other's face, they were saying the most craziest shit to each other. Mm -hmm. And I told my man, I was like, yo, what is this called? Like, because this dude just told the other dude, yo, you know, your mama, she's a whore. You know, your <laughs> papa, he a drug addict, you know, and, and I'm gonna screw your sister. Like, I'm like, what the hell is going on here? And I'm like, they have not let one blow yet. And my man said, yo, that's battle rapping, like. They said, this is as serious as, you know, when you watch in the Western and dude be like, yo, meet me at high noon. <laughs> and they both assume the opposite yeah, position. True that. And, and they're about to kill each other. <laughs> and he says, yo, that's what this is, but minus using the firearms at the time. So for me, um, that's sort of like what made me get into the idea of playing with words mm. was I was like, if I could play with these words, then I don't have to like get into these knife fights as much. I don't have to like slap box as much, you know? I could find a way of acceptance. So for me, um, and coming up with the Fugees and teaching them all like, yo, at the end of the day, I don't care how great the song is. If we show up in a place and someone says they want to go with you bar for bar, you just got to be ready. So I think like when people 
heard the score and they, you know, they listen to a record like Ready or Not and they go, you know, they hear like Now That I Escape, Street Walk or Wait. They, mm -hmm. Those are like, I don't think like we would be able to, to bar like that if we didn't understand the culture right. um, of, of battle rap. And to me, that's very important. So in saying that, man, um, one of the things that I've noticed that you've done, you know, like you just said, like you, you're like the greatest negotiator. So I call your, 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 your territory neutral ground. And this is important. I need everybody to understand by what I mean. This is clearly neutral ground. So every flag, every set that you could possibly think of in the world, if it's a street set, you know, you call them gangs, people call them gangs, I call them tribes. You know, I'm too, too, too far ahead. Mm -hmm. Every tribe has been on Smack DVD. Right, and every tribe has been on URL. Every tribe has been on Proving Ground. Um, you know, Summer Madness. I could keep going. You bring an alternative form of creativity, where at times, like I said, that playground thing, like where you could go back to back, and from this, commercial people be like, oh, let me pull this MC, or let me pull this MC, or I need to put this MC on a track. Um, what is it about you, right, that I don't care who the tribe is, when they come to see you, that level of respect, and somehow you're able to defuse every situation? Like, there's like crazy memes of you, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we all got these crazy, you know, where yeah. if it's going down, you know what I'm saying? You're like, no, 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 it ain't going like yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? Or if one person's trying to get a verse off, and the crowd's not, and you know, you like, y'all gotta calm down. It's almost like you've created a subsidy of a total empire with your own language, your own culture, your own clothes and everything. What is that thing? So if a 15 year old is looking at you right now saying, man, you know, I need to be like, this guy's a businessman. What is that thing about you that you could give to us? Oh, I can tell you, man, it's just like being yourself, man. I can't say nothing nothing better than that. Just being yourself, being true to who you are as a person, and that's how you're gonna gain the respect. I'm just breaking it down to its purest form. Be yourself, uh -huh. and you'll gain the respect from others. You know, don't try to be nothing that you're not. Don't try to front and try to be, step outside or live outside of who you really are. I feel like, you know, that's, that's what, you know, um, made me who I am as a person. Um, that model made people respect me as an individual. And, you know, they look at this guy like, yo, man, no matter what, yo, this guy, you know, he lived up to his word. He said he's gonna do what he's gonna do. He never, like, you know, practiced no, uh, no, 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 no bad business. You know, he, he he's a man of his word, you know? And I think that carries you know, uh, 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 that, that holds a lot of weight in anything that you do, in any industry that you're involved in. You know, I feel like that is the key element of like, you know, uh, gaining the respect from, 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 from the people, um, you know, and, 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 and from there, it's like, you know, I, I just try to like, you know, um, just, you know, do for others, provide opportunity for others, you know, uh, uh, create other people opportunity, help them reach and accomplish the goals that they got set out for their lives. You know, like if I could help somebody, you know, establish or get to something that they dream to get to, I feel like my blessings in return, it will be will be countless. You, you understand what I'm saying? I feel like, you know, um, me just, you know, uh, being in the position that I am, like I say, I call it the liaison between underground and, and mainstream, or just being in a position uh -huh. that, you know, I got millions of eyeballs focused on what I'm producing to see new talent or to see certain people perform, whether it's battle rap, whether it's just other, you know, a rapper in a booth, whether it's somebody at a show, you just catch me at a wide club show, whatever it is. People pay attention to my work Facts. because you know I've been I've been embedded with the respect from the realest people in the, in the game. 
the real, I've been around the realest clef. I've been around Wyclef, man. I'm at Wyclef Crib. It don't get no realer yeah. than that. I'm on a, I'm on, I'm on a, I'm on yeah, a G4 yeah. with, with Fat Joe. Let me tell you a story with Fat Joe real quick. Like he was terrified of flying. Yeah. Terrified. He was terrified yeah. of flying at one point in his life. <laughs> his first time flying, again, he called me to come take that flight with him just so we could document it and film it. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Like, it, it's, it's, shout it's, out to you know, Joe. Shout out to Joe, you know what I'm saying? T.S. all day, you know what I mean? But yeah. um, it's, it's situations like that, you know what I mean? Me running around with 50 at the prime of G unit, like, and, 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 and these guys, are, these, these artists are appreciative that I'm there, you know? Yeah. Big Meech, the, one of the illest, biggest, you know what I'm saying? Entrepreneurs, street dudes in the game respect me because they they see that I was true to myself and they see that you know I was basically on a mission of like helping others complete their objectives and their goals in life and it goes a long way man like you know it, that that, go, that goes a long way so anybody that's looking I feel like anybody that's trying to get in I don't care what it is that you're doing I don't care if you want to sell cookies, you want to sell DV, you try to be an artist, you want to play basketball, you want to do anything you do, you got to be real with yourself. And, you know, that's, that's yeah. basically what it is. So, so now, that's so amazing that we all tuned in, we inspired. I've done so many, um, I don't call them interviews, conversations, because I'm talking to my friends. Um, one of the most interesting ones. So I want to do a, a little bit of battle rap trivia. Right, because you know, like I'm embedded in the culture. Like, if anyone's tuned in, um, I'm talking about. I got records with Murder Mook. Where did I saw Murder Mook? I saw him on the battle. I saw him on the classic battle. And when I met Murder Mook, he'll tell you, like a fan, um, like I was a fan. You know what I'm saying? Um, Loaded Lux, you know, in the studio. Like he came through. Um, I've met Daylight. Like everyone that I've met, I've literally, I've been to a couple of your events. Um, they've been amazing. I'm in with Arsenal now. So my thing is, being like you the Vince McMahon, it comes with a lot of love, but it's a lot of responsibilities because at times, like with the league, you know what I'm saying to you? My question to you is, Tay Rock, for example, right? You have like these uh, Mayweather styles of certain cats, right? So and you have where you test people at a, like Tay Rock, for example. I have to use him because when I saw his very young, young battle, like that little, mm -hmm. I promise you now, anyone that's tuned in, um, Tay Rock has a line where he says, um, Crip, you know, uh, I have a line where I say, you know, uh, my people was allergic to uh, kryptonite, something where he uses the word crypt as in a Superman form or a gang form, mm -hmm. right? And so before Tay Rock, I was on, uh, me and Cannabis was on in London with, uh, with, uh, with, with Homeboy, I'm, I'm going blank, the biggest DJ. And I was freestyling, and this was when we was younger, like you would say way before Tay Rock. And I could always identify with Tay Rock for some reason, because like in my hood, they used to call me a thug nerd because you could tell the level of reading and the expansion, just the knowledge and then how he spreads it, you know, just to take one example. But when I watch Tay Rock versus Goods, right, I, I wanna use this example, which is a very interesting battle. Um, how do you put these cards together? Because it's sort of like Goods got this charismatic thing, like he just, you know, it's it's like this Dude, Harlem cool. thing, you know, he's like cool. he could just he's be like, you know, <laughs> these are, you know, he's like, you yeah. know, you know, uh, G4, um, you know, drinking champagne. Oh, I know this has nothing to do with the battle, but these are the things I just <laughs> think about, right? <laughs> and so I just take this classic battle. How, when you are coming up with a smack card, um, how how do you know like what us the audience like really want to see like because you pair it i've seen you take chess 
as a young child and you basically raise them, grew them up. Um, some people end up leaving the league thinking they're gonna do something else. And then at times, you know, I could see like the friction and then they come back. Um, and I think that you have, your name is mentioned more like than Donald Trump's name. I just want to be clear. If a rapper is rapping, the first thing he's going to say, yeah, and smack, you know what I mean? Including me. So how do you put these cards together, man? Well, basically, when I first started the uh, league, you know, um, the Ultimate Rap League, the URL, um, I, I, I just had a simple formula. Like, I want to see everybody versus everybody because styles make fights, you know? Um, it, it's situations where, you know what I mean, you know, this guy might lose to this guy, but if he beat, this guy will beat the guy that he lost to, like, you know what I mean, in a different battle. Like, you know, everybody got different styles. So, like, when I put the uh, situation together, I just wanted to create a platform where the best rappers in the world, best battle rappers in the world, actually get a chance to battle every other best battle rapper in the world. And, you know, the URL is full of battlers. That's the best battlers in the world. So I just want to see everybody face everybody at one time or another. And um, it, it, it's, 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 it's definitely like, you know, uh, you know, a time thing because, you know, certain, you know, um, battle rappers have more energy in certain time periods in their career where it just makes sense. Like, all right, yo, they, these, this two, this battle, they, they might have a feud online or say something or going back and forth on a blog or something. People start, you know what I mean, getting into it. And then it's just like, all right, yo, this, this, it's time for these two to actually have a conversation with each other, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know, we put that match together, oh my God. you know, so, you yeah. know, it, it's, it's that. And um, also just basically like, you know, I do it for the culture, I do it for the fans. I I, I, I like to like put together the the, the, uh, the battles that the, the fans like to see as well. So, you know, um, there's a lot of different, you know, uh, situations that, you know, goes into like, you know, I mean, putting cards together, but like, you know, every card that we put together, we just try to make sure that it's a card that's gonna be respected and um, it's a card that people will actually wanna see. That's, that's definitely amazing. Before I let you go, um, two things. I, we all, and I've sat down with you with Beasley, we've had conversations. Um, I've seen you do the BET thing. Everybody's been, you know, and I, and I watch your growth. And, you know, I, I'm always like, to me, like Smack DVD, Smack period and Beasley, Don DeMarco, you, it's like, at the end of the day, it reminds me of Miles Davis. It's just pure. Like, what you see is what you see. Like, it's almost like big corporations tie themselves to y'all for the credibility because y'all don't compromise and y'all unapologetic to what y'all do because it's all for right. the culture. That's the only reason y'all do that. In saying that, it looks like, I remember like Puff, shout out to Puff, um, everybody have been watching. And as a businessman, you know, always looking for what's the next big thing, right? Because at the end of the day, you know, that that's that hood mentality. You know, and I'm Haitian, so I got 30 jobs. You know how I move. Yeah. And it looks like, what is your relationship with caffeine? Because my thing was, I was like, if anybody find a way to take all of the battle raps, and put them in one area because everyone want to learn, they want to. So it looks like I got my app, my URL app. And now I'm seeing a heavy promotion with caffeine. Um, so if you could tell us a little bit about that before you go so we all can understand yeah. um, where are you headed, man? Oh man, you know, the sky's the limit, Clef. Like, you know what I mean? Movies, DVDs, streaming platforms, you know, documentaries, you know, they all coming. Um, the relationship with Caffeine is they are my distribution partner. You know what I mean? They're my distribution uh -huh. partner. Um, shout out to Drake. Drake, you know, and myself actually, you know, came together because he was just a, a big fan of the culture. I love Drake. Yeah. Shout out to Drake. Like, that's one yeah, dude that, you know what I mean? He's like myself. Like, everything since I seen him, you know, I met him. He was always a fan since the Smack DVD days. So, like, when I met him, 
yeah, he's yeah. just always like, yo, man, yo, I love your work. Y'all grew up watching you. So he has like a different type of like respect yeah. for me. And um, he always yeah, expressed man. it. Like, you know what I mean? Ever since I first met him. And, you know, he's always just willing to help. He's like, yo, what can I do to help, you know, you basically take, you know what I mean? Everything that you're doing to the next level. Um, we had like numerous conversations and, you know, um, you know, before, you know, we uh, actually um, came together, I used to distribute um, the battles through my pay-per-view model. You know what I mean? I used to do pay-per-views. I used to do uh -huh. like fights yeah. where, you know what I mean? We'll charge a pay-per-view fee uh -huh. for, you know, people to actually watch these cards and watch these events. So, you know, um, you know, talking to him, you know, he was always like, you know, wanting to support, you know, the pay-per-views. He used to buy them. Like, yo, I, yo, I bought the pay-per-view, yo, yeah. you know what I mean? But like, you know, and he, in the process of him giving me constructive criticism, it's just like we 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 formally and like you know how to like make it an easy and a better experience for like you know the culture yeah. in in its entirety. So he like yo I don't yeah. I don't I, I signed up but you know that was kind of annoying like doing it this way yo why you do it that way and I explained to him yo I do it this way because of this this that and the third and he be like all right so how about if we do this I'm like yeah, if we do that we could just take this and do that. So we came up with, you know, the, the formula that we have now, and we found a strategic partner to actually get rid of the pay-per-view that people uh -huh. will have to pay for, and now they could actually see it for free. So instead of paying $50 oh, wow. okay. for, you know, a live event, now you can actually just download the caffeine app and actually, you know, have access to the whole card for free. You know what I mean? As it air live. So, you know, you only get, it's just like a fight now. You Like if you go to HBO, you know, you go see the Mayweather fight, you gotta go at HBO when they fight in, when it's live, you see it live yeah, one yeah. time and one time only. And then after that- I love that. It goes on my, URLTV.TV app. Now, we used to distribute, you know what I mean, our content through YouTube, but like, you know, I, I, I just, I'm just an entrepreneur, you know, um, and I just want to control, like, you know what I'm saying, my content that I produce, you know, um, we did YouTube for 10 years. I, I, I developed a, a, a big, you know, nice fan base on YouTube, but like their business models on like how you monetize the content, they, they, their figurations just is not making sense to our business strategies and what we feel is is necessary and what we deserve for what we putting into creating this content. So we just started, you know, our own streaming company, you know what I mean, Black Dome. And, you know, we're gonna continue to just be, you know, in the independent, go, go, in, go. In, in the independent space, you know? So after, Love. you know, our partners, our strategic partner, Caffeine, out there air live, and, you know, I wanted to like do that, that for the culture too, because, you know, now it's just like in the midst of a pandemic, people don't got to actually go in their pockets to enjoy the art form of battle rap. Now all they got to do yeah. is download a free app, which they, they, they can just download it, sign up, you know, and then um, follow my channel. And now they have access to all of the live events for free, one time and one time only as the event happens live. So, they've just my distribution partner a good strategic partner and um i look forward to just basically you know developing and and, and, and building on our relationship just so we could uh keep you know battle rap in the eyes of the people like you know what i mean as long as we get actually uh distribute and give the access to the people to actually see the content for free i feel like it bring more eyeballs people be more assess uh, uh you know they'd be more willing to actually you know support the culture and get more in tune with the culture if they don't have to pay to see it so that's just one of the uh concepts behind you know our you know our, our, our partnership with caffeine and you know it, it's, it's a good partnership and i, I just want to continue to build on it yeah, let, let me tell you one business that you, you need to focus on, and I will invest in it. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you what it is. So, besides Barry White, my nigga, your beard game? <laughs> like, nigga, 
I'm, I need to smack Gre- Yo, listen. Yo, man, me, listen. Yo, me and James Harden, I'm, every time we see that, like, and he lucky I'm cutting listen, because James man, be on, like, like yo, James, James <laughs> probably be on my neck. He be like, yo, what's up, little bitch? Yo. <laughs> Yo, what is it, yeah. man? I need the smack. I, I need the. Gr- uh, what is like? Yo, man, I, I'm just blessed. Listen, to you don't big, have to yo, tell listen. me what the formula is. Yeah, nah, listen, nah, man. Listen, smack, man. Listen. Like, I don't got it. I know outside, that. Man. Look, what is it, man? Yo, well, you amazing. Yo, Shout out to you. Yeah. Everybody, get the app because we're getting the app and um. And I know yeah, me and you, we got definitely. a lot of surprises coming into the future. And I look forward definitely. to, um, let me see. So the latest battle I saw, of course, was uh, Tay Rock, um, Daylight. Amazing classic yeah. battle. Um, oh, I saw Jada Nightwing slowly coming up. Yeah. Um, I saw yeah. Jada Nightwing, like you be bringing these stars up. So um, focus on all that. So I look forward to the next battle. I'm going to watch. What, what are we, Street? What's going to be live on Caffeine next? So we, we all looking up. Um, oh, y'all don't the know The next yet. show that we have on Caffeine, we got two coming up that I, I, I like to promote okay. right now. Um, it's okay. going to be October 17th. You know. Um, the oh, sh- day of my birthday. Oh, that's your birthday? Oh, you, yeah, you, that's damn my have, birthday. Have, Let me know. I'm tuning in. Clef, you might have to pull up. I'm yeah, tuning in. I'm doing. tuning in. Talk to me. <laughs> you know, um, you know, it's a, it's a secret location we shoot out of. You know what I mean? But I don't know yeah. if you around that area. You know, you always more than welcome to come through whatever I got going on. Yeah, you know, my know. platform, your platform. But um, I know. You know, October 17th. This is gonna be a dope dope card because you know what I'm saying we representing for the ladies and the dudes so it's the kings versus the queens we got the dopest female battle rappers going up against the dopest male battle rappers so it's going to be an intergender card where you know what I mean the dudes is versing some of the dopest female lyricists and battle rap MCs and it's going to be crazy 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 that, that- that's amazing. Yeah. You know, I, I love official jazz the rapper, Mrs. Hustle, yeah. 40 bars, E Heart. See, I'm inside bars, of they that all, culture, they, all on it. they all on it. They, they, oh, the card wow, is crazy. 40, 40 bars oh, wow. going up against Sue Surf, E Heart going up against K Shine. Oh, wow. You know, oh, man. Uh, you know oh, wow. it, it's, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be crazy. It's going to be crazy, crazy. You know what I mean? That's amazing. That's so, amazing. You know, um, we got that. That's going down on the 17th. That's going to be live on Cat on October 17th and it, 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 you know showtime usually start around you know 4 p.m. depending on your time zone or where you at I know this is an international show so you know 4, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard you know is usually around the time we start but like you know just follow you know my social media for uh, developments and details on um, exact timing that uh, the show is going to start and then the other show that we doing is going to be on actual Halloween you know what I mean October 31st mm-hmm. and that's when we okay. got you know the legendary 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 murder mook yes murder mook returns wow. and he's going up against the legendary the legendary the legendary tay rock so it's gonna be a movie like you know what i mean wow. that's oh, going man. down that's on halloween like, live that's on like caffeine as well battle, man yeah and all you got to do is just download the caffeine app you know, go to the um, go to your Android, Google Play Store, your Apple App Store. Download the Caffeine app. Once you download the Caffeine app, you, you you just put in the username, set it up, whatever. Go through the steps of setting it up. Real simple. After that, all you gotta do is follow my channel on the Caffeine app. You know, once you follow the URL TV, then Man. you know anytime we basically go live or we have an event coming up, you'll get a notification on your phone and let you know that, yo, we're about to be live in an hour. So, you know, you got an hour just to, you know, get ready and, you know, uh, prepare yourself to witness greatness and witness history. All right, I love it. Well, I love you, my brother. Yeah, I love you more, Clark, man. To you. Yo, thank you for having me on the show, too, man. Like, you know, you know, I got so much respect Sumat. for you, man. And, you know what I mean? You're, you know you're, I love you're, you. You, you you're, you're one of the guys that really, like, you know, inspired me to do what I do, man. So I want to thank you in front of the world, man. And uh, just, you know what I'm saying? Just, 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 just tell you that, you know what I mean? I love you and I appreciate you, brother. You know what I'm saying? World. Likewise. You know, I'm, always a phone away from you. I'm still trying to say that. 
Of course, I'm still trying. See? Love. All right, Clef, man. I love, love you, yo. King. Bless. Uh, we'll talk soon. Uh, peace. I'm going to see you at the crib. We got other things to talk yeah, yeah, about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, let's do it. set that up. You already All know. Right. Love you, King. I uh, love, boy. All right. Uh. Cheap to write the horror flick of Stephen King. Cling the fucks all the time. I say, I got tired of the fat lady, so I sit on my own. I press. Ballin', 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 to the man in Rockers Island. It's getting fired. That's what you're going to die. Welcome back. Um, so we're back again and acoustic vibes, man. And I re-nicknamed this gentleman to Mighty Lion. And what are you on, on social media and different platforms? Yeah, all sa- social media at T Lion TV. That's T L Y O N T V. <clears throat> and he's one of Triller's Like, it's so crazy how many platforms is out there. And certain platforms, like, is just, you can see how talent just, that's why I say technology is important. Because you don't know from what platform it's going to come from. And right now on Triller, your song is what? Number? Number four right now. Number four. And that's pretty insane. And we connected. uh, I mean, you're definitely amazing. We did a. We started doing a inst, uh, Triller Live, mm-hmm, the Instagram Live, and then just literally going, yeah. creating from scratch. Yep. Every right? Wednesday, just coming up with something new. I remember when I sent you that text. I was like, "Yo, this why I clef." <laughs> and then I, was, I hit you. I was at work. I left. I left work <laughs> instantly. I left work. I had to. <laughs> I really did. Yo, so um, we gonna catch a vibe with you. This record is called what? Called Power. Okay, once again, uh, I love this like format because there's no height, no cap, no gas, no like extra tricks in the back. You know what I mean? The Mighty Lion. Tune. Nobody check me, know that every day the devil tests me, but see I'm living stress free, I can't let your energy affect me, I battle suicide and I'm still alive, depression tried to come get me, I seen homicide and I still survive, too much love in my city, they'll talk down on you, you. it's because they see the God in you, uh, they'll analyze the things you do, just to find a flaw in you, you're that powerful, Say they'll talk down on you, you It's because they see the God in you uh, They'll analyze the things you do uh, Just to find a flaw in you You're that powerful Look, I'm too familiar with sticks and stones That's how I got so strong And I owe too much to this place called home That's why I gotta put on I've seen tears turn fatal I've watched death go unnoticed, I've seen suicide on paper Would've never thought that love could be lonely Ain't another drug, but love can take action Simple step in front of a train to find answers Even a brilliant mind can turn cancerous That's why you gotta watch how you handle it You see light from dark and you pick a side I know it's hard to stop switching sides Just don't believe it cause it's a lie I say don't believe it cause it's a lie Hey, I should've sang that part Just so you know that I mean that part Just love yourself and clean your heart Embrace all darkness and find that spark it's powerful, the God in me, he provides in you If ever need be, confide in me To help you find the God in you, Hey, Can't nobody check me Know that every day the devil tests me But see I'm living stress free I can't let your energy affect me I battle suicide and I'm still alive Depression tried to come get me I seen homicide and I still survive Too much love in my They'll talk down on you, you. It's because they see the God in you They'll analyze the things you do Just to find a flaw in you But you're too powerful Say they'll talk down on you It's because they see the God in you And they'll analyze the things you do Just to find a flaw in you You're too powerful What they think about you, but nothing even matters. 
vibes, man. Effortless. 